Yeah, that has been a a, a thread um, pulling through all of this. Um, you know, influenced by getting to spend time with people like Peter Senge and Otto Sharmer and Deborah Ancona um, here at at uh, and Kate Isaacs here at MIT who work on 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 leadership and thinking about it in these in these contexts. Um, I think there's a couple things. So um, there's actually. I'll, I'll plug a friend's book on this one, uh, which is that uh, Clark Murphy at Russell Reynolds wrote a book called Sustainable Leadership, where he, where they, it was a built on, building on a sort of a study that RA had done, um, looking at the characteristics of people who are leading change, thinking about it in kind of organizational, organizationally, but in, in big companies. But, um, but, you know, a long-term perspective was key, like long-term activation, the ability to have a vision and to be able to communicate that vision and en enroll others and in co-creating and then being inspired by that vision. Um, I think that's key because so much of what we do in, in these arenas is react to the horror of the day, whether it's the wildfire or the slaves on the ocean fishing boat um and and i think we which we have to address and we have to develop some kind of a longer term vision for where we're going what is a regenerative economy really mean and what could a company look like that would you know be really purpose driven um there's something about systems thinking that i think is just irreducible like we if, if you don't have some way of either intuitively or analytically understanding the relationship between, um, you know, your actions and their outcomes and the ripple effects of those outcomes, um, if you don't understand the complex set of players and stakeholders who are, at, you know, at the table, um, you know, I, I think that the, the nature of the social and environmental challenges we have, the poly crisis, is that these things are really interwoven, and if and so a, the ability to um, identify leverage points, like finding ways where places where you can take a small, relatively smaller amount of action and have a bigger effect, right? Like the five million dollar capital that can catalyze the two billion dollar capital, like in the refed case. I think there's some in, um, there's some capabilities there that are really important. Um, there's there's you know there's something about being able to relate to people and stakeholder engagement and being able to take multiple pers to step out of your own point of view and, and understand the system from multiple different angles that ability to be multilingual it just comes up everywhere right if you're an or agent of change inside the organization inside a company you've got to be able to speak finance and operations and supply chain and marketing right um if you're trying to build a coalition to um, you know, reduce food waste, you've got to be able to talk to, um, you know, grassroots activists, food recovery organizations, and big middle of the supply chain distributors and farmers and policy, you know, government officials and be multivocal in that. And and I think that that is, I think, a really essential, I mean, I, I think that's so essential that Gabriel Grant and I wrote a book about that, right? Break, about how to have conversations that are constructive and generative um, to engage people, even when they have different points of view, they differ on um, these values laden issues. Um, how can we create together? That's that's what Breaking Through Good Luck is all about. Um, so I think that's that's a that's a really important one. Um, and then I, I, I think there's a part which is like, and, and this goes back to Clark's framework as well as the leadership framework here at, at, at Sloan, which is inventing, like being able to get creative and build new mechanisms. Um, you know, you think about, I don't know, virtual power purchase agreements, right? Like a new contract mechanism, right? Or um, or right now trying, you know, or, or social impact bonds or, um, or, you know, just even the technological innovations surrounding, um, you know, whether it's uh, LED light bulbs or, um, you know, electric uh, mobility. And so that ability to drive, to, to be creative and to, and to organize creative processes and invention processes, those I think are the, you know, kind of key, key, key aspects. And I think all of that is centered around an ability to like a sort of self there's something that's like 
maybe sits underneath it all, which is an understanding of oneself, understanding of um, uh, our way of being in the world, um, being able to step back from the excessive certainty and simplicity that we that our minds tend to go to. You you said at the beginning of the conversation that like we need a new brain chemistry, right? There's something there, I think, um, whether you access that through you know contemplative practice or uh, or you access that through dialogue and community with people who are very different from you that challenge your views, but that that takes a kind of courage. There's an inner dimension of transformation that we see across the board. So uh, I think that's that that's that's really critical. Uh, and it, and 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 these communities that are forming around investing for systems change, like they're all talking about how essential that is if you're going to deal with the power dynamic issues, if you're going to deal with the multivocal issues, if you're going to be able to learn and adapt and not anchor on a particular view of things, that's super essential.